Uh, greetings, everyone. You know, the Christian life to from beginning to end is what is the object of your trust? What is the object of your faith? What are you confident in? And with the rise of Reformed theology, especially, but not only Reformed, it's crept its way into so many venues. There is this doctrine, basically most call it perseverance of the, the saints is uh, the more proper term, but really what it is is a person putting their faith in their faith or their faithfulness, their ability to continue to trust Jesus. And it's not just split in hairs. It really is completely different theology and doctrine when the object of one's trust is in themselves versus in what God says, what God has done, and what he promised that he will do. Uh, I, I myself have family that knowingly or unknowingly have placed their faith in themselves at some point that they will say that someone can't lose their salvation except for walking away from the Lord is usually the... Uh, the exception or the but to the rule. You see, Scripture is very clear. At no time ought we ever to have faith in ourselves, in fallen humanity. You see, the Christian of Philippians 3, 3 says that we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence, no faith in the flesh. All throughout Scripture, this is the reality. From the very beginning of the, the Word of God, where man fell and, and showed our imperfections, which have only increased, to the very end, <clears throat> the only object that is worthy of our trust is God, what He has promised what he will do for us that we cannot do for ourselves. Ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, not in your ability to trust Christ Jesus, not in your ability to stay faithful to Christ Jesus, but your trust, your confidence, your faith is in Christ Jesus, the eternal Son of God, who became man, who died on a cross in our place, who was buried and rose again, who gives at the moment of initial faith a person complete forgiveness of sins, past, present, and future. You're imputed with his righteousness, and he gives you eternal life, life that cannot end beginning at that moment, <clears throat> not when you die not at a future point of maybe or possibly or i am got my fingers crossed that I'll stay faithful to the end. No, it's, he gives it at that moment that you trust him. I love First Timothy and when God is speaking through Paul, showing, now it's Paul who God used to say we have no confidence in the flesh, that we're children by faith. It was God that spoke through Paul that said, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Faithfulness and service are inseparable. But that service, not eternal salvation or the reception of eternal life, who was before a blasphemer, a persecutor, injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation or acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief still speaking present tense still no confidence in the flesh 
Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Christ Jesus might show, or Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering, for a pattern to them, which should hereafter believe on Him, to life everlasting. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory, forever and ever. Amen. You see, the boasting is in. God in Jesus. First John says, Beloved, first John 3 2, beloved, now, not when we die, not when we've endured to the end of our life faithfully. Now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, speaking of the new body, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. You see, Jesus makes it very clear all throughout, especially in the book of John, the only book in Scripture that has a statement of purpose being that the content was recorded so that people would read it, faith coming by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, that they would believe what it says and by believing on Jesus, receive eternal life. So John is packed with very specific statements regarding how and when a person is imputed with righteousness, further explained in, in Romans chapter 4, and how they get eternal life. Jesus said, verily, verily, or truly, truly, listen up, I'm doubly emphasizing this next statement. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, to believe on Jesus is to place faith also in the Father who sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. To believe on or and believeth on him that sent me hath, possesses right now, not future tense, has, have, hath, possess, everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation or judgment. You can not, you shall not go to hell but is passed from death unto life. When? At the moment you place your faith in Jesus. Not if you hang on to the end, will it be given later, it's given now. You see, Peter puts it this way in 1 Peter chapter 1, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten now us unto a lively or living hope, a certain living future expectation that is as sure as the sunrise in the east every morning all over the world. It's, just, it's guaranteed. It's a certain hope, expectation by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven right now for you who are kept or protected, guarded, kept safe by the power of God, not yourself, not your ability to continue to endure, through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, when all components of our promised salvation, to include your glorified body, resurrection from the dead, being with Christ always, is revealed in a future tense. And we are kept, we are guarded, we are made safe unto that event by which at we will see those promises fulfilled by the power of God, not self. Reform theology and all other groups that have this idea that a person must have faith in themselves via their own faith have adopted some form of this perseverance of the saints by which ever so slightly Satan has managed to take the believer, if they are saved, and shift the object of their assurance, their trust, just enough off Jesus 
that it's no longer on the fact that Jesus promised eternal life, that he paid for it with his blood on the cross, that he guarantees it via his resurrection, him ever living, the Son of God. And it's been shifted just off of Jesus and to the quality of their faith. You see in these modern translations where they add words in that's not in the Greek text, such as in that faith or such faith, a modifier they add into primarily like books uh, like James, where their object is a certain type of faith, not a certain object, but a certain man measured uh, quality of faith. And it's the faith that they look at. It's their, am I being faithful that they look at? Well, I won't walk away. I've heard it said, but others might. And if others do, they're lost or they never were saved or etc. And you see how the, <clears throat> there's a little bit of uh, evident pride in a person and their ability to stay faithful. And just like that, the person's focal point of their faith is themselves and their ability. They don't really understand or they have forgotten the gospel truth, its simplicity. He that believes possesses eternal life. He that <clears throat> does not believe, the wrath of God abides or remains upon them. The simplicity that this happens at the moment of faith, and it's eternally promised and guaranteed and sure from that moment forever because it, it has nothing to do with us. It's not about what we do. <clears throat> it's about God's faithfulness. Our faithfulness is something that we should pray and, and study the word and try and be built up to trust God more and more <clears throat> because as a Christian, there is a great recompense of a faithful life lived trusting God and serving God. Crowns, rewards, God looking at you and saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. So being faithful is very important in the Christian's walk, in his service or her service to God, but at no point should we shift our trust to whether we're faithful and whether we what how's our faith today so many live in torment and walk away from the faith or just throw their hands up and give up because they don't they're not looking to jesus the author and finisher of our faith our king our savior who saves us we have no part in saving ourselves but they are trusting in herself. And humanity is the last thing we should put our hope in. We're sinners at birth. And our flesh will retain that until it is made incorruptible, immortal at the resurrection. <clears throat> Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. This is a truth for all Christians. Who have put their faith in Jesus, not in anything else. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. You can say that yourself. Who loved me and gave himself for me, for you, for the world. He goes on in Galatians chapter 3, a group of believers whose faith had shifted to another gospel, their object of faith now is themselves after getting saved. <clears throat> oh, foolish Galatians. I mean, it's let's just hit to the heart of the matter. How foolish it is to trust in ourselves now any more than it was before we trusted in Jesus. Our flesh has, has not improved one bit. Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? that you should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes <clears throat> Jesus Christ have been evidently set forth, crucified among you. 
This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law? So did you receive eternal life by the works of the law, by something you did in your flesh, or by the hearing of faith, by the understanding of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? How foolish an idea it is that we would trust in Jesus, knowing our hopelessness, trusting in Jesus, knowing our, our sinful capacity and offenses, to put your faith in Jesus, receive the Spirit, be born again to an inheritance incorruptible, and ever think, well, now I'm saved, I can trust in what I do. I'm saved, now I can trust in my faithfulness and not solely and entirely upon Jesus who saved me, who redeemed me, who bought me because all of these things I could not then nor now contribute anything to making it happen for myself. But all throughout the world you have people that say, well, if you lose the faith, you're not saved or you lose your salvation or you proved you weren't saved whose object is themselves, not Jesus. And it is blinding. That pride is blinding as pride is to these people. I'm not saying they're not saved. I'm just saying right now, Clearly, by their own words, by their own doctrines, the fact they even have one solidified in a five-point systematic theology called Reformed or Calvinistic theology, their faith is in themselves. And they'll try to work Jesus in somehow, so it's Jesus working through me and proving I'm saved. It's, it's not me, it's Jesus that I'm so good, or I'm so holy, or that I'm so faithful. The reality is they're trusting in man. They're trusting in man's ability and they're putting confidence in their flesh instead of in Jesus. See, when you understand and really stare at the gospel, it is always Jesus-centered. At the cross, his resurrection, at his present existence to ever make intercession, that it's his power keeping us saved. The true gospel is always Jesus-centered. And man is always the problem. Man exalting religions, however, have man at the center point of faith, the center point of focus. And Jesus somehow works into their systematic, into their system. I, I plead with all people, read the scriptures, and what you'll find is there is none righteous. In our flesh, no, not one. There's not a righteous man on the earth that does not sin before or after salvation. Our flesh has not been redeemed yet. Your soul and spirit, perfect. You have an internal aspect to you that when God gave you new life, come and live inside of you, made you spiritually alive, that aspect of your nature, this new nature, does not commit a single sin. And it is contrary in every capacity to your flesh. And your flesh in every way is contrary to the new birth. We are kept by God's power. He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Believeth thou this? Do you? The moment that you trusted Jesus, do you understand that you've got eternal life? That all of your sins, past, present, and future, were paid for? Do you understand that you were crucified? The cross was very crowded. Jesus bore the sins of the entire world. He took our place on the cross. He became sin who knew no sin, so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You see, there's this exchange that happened, and the only Thing that is required is that childlike faith, understanding and acceptance that he did it for you on a personal level. And from that point, you are saved. You are sealed until the day of redemption. From that point, not before, you are predestined 
be conformed to the image of his son, to the redemption of our bodies. Guaranteed. We don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but we know it's going to be like him, John said. From that point, you have a destination that will not change. You were not predestined to be in him, but once you're in him, you're predestined, guaranteed, to a future destination, the redemption of our bodies, that glorification. That's where we put our faith, in the promises of Jesus, in the works, in the name, as many as received him, those that believed on his name. That's the object. Don't ever let it be yourself. We need not put our faith in the mirror. We need to put our faith in the word of God. And the word of God says, the moment you trust him, regardless, <clears throat> good, bad, or indifferent, you are kept by the power of God. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You're in the Father's hand. You're in the Son's hand. And he will never lose you in no wise, for no reason, will he ever cast you out. Our faith needs always be in him. Not in our faith. Not in our works. Not in our faithfulness. None of these things. No confidence in us whatsoever. All confidence needs to always rest fully like you're putting your full weight on a chair and you're not trying to hold yourself up you're not trying to hang on you're just resting in that salvation you are resting in the promises of god knowing that you are his he is yours you have now eternal life and that's a promise you can depend on so i hope this was helpful if you're questioning your own ability to stay faithful or have faith in that repent change your mind Turn your head slightly back away from it and solely and fixate on the awesomeness that is Jesus and what he did for us. So till next time, I want to say take care. God bless. Stay vigilant. Our flesh is a tricky thing. And uh, just remember, the true gospel is always Jesus-focused. So till next time.